Hello everybody, I'd like to give you an update on my current project. I'm working on um, plasma excited fields to channel, to organize the energy flow through a system. You see here the FET tube, which is a specific built um, rife tube for me, which is not available anymore. So I have a, have a very specific vacuum and a higher concentration of helium inside. This one is driven by colas from my bipolar tesla cord outside only to energize and the vortex of the plasma field inside. I have on splatter free electrodes which comes inside high voltage going through direct current. Unfortunately also with a bit of ripple from um, my plasma dome um, transformer flyback if you want. So I feed that high voltage through and the neon bulb underneath will get illuminated through the high voltage from the uh, flyback of the plasma dome and I control the flow through here via my, my excited um, helium vortex inside. So we will go through a couple of things. So that is a preliminary experience as a kind of proof of concept which I know will work and I can show you how it works but that's only the very beginning. Every energy system currently in an alternative energy scene is based on that subject. You have one waveguide or wave or a, gen a center frequency and you add additional frequencies to match it up that, that you have then on your so-called output coil or whatever mechanism you have, you have um, a gain from the ambient energy field. So we do the same here. The positive part of it, of the plasma field, is that that is completely flexible. Not in that construction here. However, I get a complete vacuum system um, with whom I have various materials of tube um, containers. So I have quartz, I have pyrex, different size as well. I can use electrodes without electrodes. I can add colors as well and I have a coil pickup system. I have various noble gas. Actually I have all of them. So we start with helium, we go over to um, argon, krypton, xenon. If you want all the five noble gases in various concentrations I will test them. So there will be specific setup where I have um, um, a high concentration. I will also have a specific amplifier section currently not in use which will add various frequency modulation, demodulation, FM and AM modulation to the wave frequency and that will be a long term process to understand the best energy flow to the construction. So that gives you only an idea of what I'm doing currently. That work will be done in collaboration with others. So because it's very complex, so I cannot do that completely alone. However, all the components built for me, I instruct that already there on the way. I will have some very soon and I can start building. Now let's get started. I have started up now the high voltage DC with the ripple feeding through the plasma tube and I'm starting up here at 8, 9 kilohertz and you can see that there's an influence of the plasma field already visible as an overlay um, through the ripple of the system. So I go up in the frequency and see how the first aligns. Um, there is a marginal change here valuable to see and um, the current um, is at certain frequencies also higher. But what you will notice here is that the overlay or on the ripple waveguide if you want that the influence is not that strong. So that will become apparent later on when I increase the power. So I go up here in a frequency range. Also power drops um, quite a lot from the input side which I feed by the might be polar tesla coil currently but what you will notice is that there is a direct connectivity or direct connection between power 
ähm, in the plasma field and power through the plasma field. Both frequency to overlay and bear in mind at the moment I have only one frequency I'm using. So and here what you can see is uh, above a certain frequency nothing is really happening anymore. So well, let's move on. I removed now probe 1 and added frequency on the bottom to give you an idea on channel 2. That means that's my output uh, oscilloscope on the output side. That's the frequency going through the system. So you will see that the maturity of the ripple, what you can see here, the dark lines or the strong lines, is the shorter lines of frequency, that is a ripple coming from the high voltage DC. And the small lines in between are the moment I do tracking here with my cursors is a frequency going through from um, my plasma field. So the plasma has two functions here. It, do, it does first of all conduct. The energy is going through the system. That's one function. And the second function is that the plasma becomes excited by an external frequency range. And the goal is here to find frequencies. As with all other systems where you use three frequencies in three coil um, um, setup, that you want to have overlaps to that extent that the third, the pickup coil, gets the highest energy output and that's from where you take it. So uh, I'm attempting exactly the same here, except that I don't need to have fixed build systems. So I'm very flexible here. So the flexibility margin here is extremely high because the plasma will be completely configurable. That is equivalent of having a coil which can be changed on the fly with turns, thickness of wire, space between um, the wires and so on. So that's what the plasma fulfills here. So we have a wide range of possibilities to deal. So what you see here, if I go up at a specific frequency over 200, nothing much happens anymore. Okay, the current goes up, plus, but also please bear in mind there's a lot of uh, radiation in electric field from the bipolar Tesla coil, so that's not all from system. So there's nothing really happening here anymore. But let's move on to higher input power. So aligning now the input power to the level set the ripple becomes um, an energy feed which is highly influenced by the plasma field. So that is achieved here unfortunately at a lower frequency here at 26 kilo kilohertz. It's around 40 watt so it's a lot of power in there. So that becomes more efficient but you will see here that I create ghost images. So the ripple becomes highly influenced now via uh, the electric field from um, the bipolar test called via the two colors and it becomes very very interesting when we go up in the frequency range. The power output is much higher as well and one of the interesting um, uh, phenomena you will see here is that so-called ghost images um, exist that you have two three waves here we have now a double wave coming in here. The frequency is still the same please bear in mind nothing has changed in the frequency I have only additional kicks but they are not visible as an additional frequency. It's still the same frequency, but has a much higher output because they count as kicks, if you want. So it's a bit difficult to, to understand that. But if you look at that, and you will, um, when we go further on, it looks a little bit like a DNA, um, which is intertwined to each other with many, many strengths. So that's similar what happen what's happening here. We have at a various frequency range, we have an overlap of many, many um, mirror images until they become complete out target and create its own new image. So we, we have two at the moment here, I show three. And the goal is to have an infinite a number of kicks, if you want. So Bear in mind, I'm only at the beginning here with one frequency, so that's what I can only, as a proof of concept, show you what's going to happen. Here I have now four. So this four are quite strong. So that has an impact, what you can't see at the moment, had an impact already on the brightness of the fluorescent bulb. 
So the energy through the plasma is already influenced by the vortex within the plasma field. That the energy is accelerated out. However, and that's interesting, it is not indicated that there's a in, uh, frequency change. So there's something completely outside happening. And I will have to use additional measurement um, mechanism to track this kind of information as well. But I will go later on to that stage to identify that and to show that. Moving up in a frequency range now, I come then to a very, very interesting um, phenomenon where when the system becomes completely autark, at the moment it's aligned because it's in an around the 90 kilohertz range. That means it's again on the odd or odd of the frequency of the 30s if you want. That means I have only the ripple along the waveguide if you want. And that has also an influence that the um, output power is low. But now what you see very very beautiful. I have now four waves completely nicely mirrored and they are very very strong. So the fluorescent bulb is very strong at the moment lit. And you see the, the, the violet line underneath is a pickup um, um, probe from which which runs above the fluorescent bulb. So again here I'm aligned on a frequency and I'm following only the waveguide. 120 kilohertz. Moving further up. So the phenomenon is still the same above 300, 400, 500 kilohertz. Nothing is happening here anymore. But here what you can see here I can show you the identical transmission line reflection. So the dark line here is the waveguide coming from the high voltage through and the thin line here is a reflection coming via the plasma. So that's the thin line. It is not that intensive but that's a reflection of the plasma field coming through. So that's the traditional reflection of a transmission line here which you normally want to avoid because that means loss of energy and that also means that your amplifier stage is in harm's way. We don't want that. We don't want to have any reflections. We want to capture them all for the output. Going further up, nothing much happens anymore. Of course, as I said before, the current will increase. But that does not he have any influence. So uh, when you see here 125, 130, alone 80 of that or 70 of that is based from the field which comes from the by Blood Tesla coil. Moving on. I want to briefly demonstrate what happens when you switch off the plasma excitation field. So you see the plasma above. So high voltage is going so you see on the oscilloscope the four aligned waves. It's twelve watt in, switching off. You see it's a standard ripple, so it's a third of power only going into fluorescent bulb, switching it on again, and it, um, it it actually confirms on amperage as well that a third of the power um, is only left over after I switch off. So that has to be taken into consideration and calculated later on for the optimization. That needs to be precisely measured for output power and precisely measured for input, inclusive the input power on the plasma field for creating this vortex. You can imagine there are many, many variables which needs to be identified. That is a long-term process to do that. And I consider writing software for that, doing that for me based on parameters and have to automate that. Otherwise, it becomes an endless exercise to deal with. Thank you all for watching and till the next time.